it's uh it's five o'clock uh oh people are wanting to am i admitting the guests or no am i muted no i'm not muted no you're good but am um, i admitting the guests i'm nope. in this rainbow i am oh, look this thing is amazing um hi it's five o'clock it's time for watch me work we have been doing this for 14 15 years for a long time we started in the lobby of the public theater and when the pandemic hit we moved online all the time we are grateful to the public theater for hosting us and we are grateful to howl round for hosting us i have my acdc shirt on today if anybody wonders because because um and uh oh i don't know what that has to do with anything except we, what we do in watch me work is we work together for 20 minutes and then um i take your questions about your work and your creative process we have the remainder of our hour together after the 20 minutes we have the remainder of our hour to talk with you about your work and your creative process which is plenty of time what we don't have time for is for you to like you know read your work aloud and get feedback or perform your piece of beautiful choreography for us anything like that we have tons of time to talk about process shop all those good things zoe in the new work development department will tell us how to get in touch Hi, everyone. Welcome to another lovely session of Watch Me Work. Happy September. After our 20 minutes of working together, um, we'll go ahead and get some questions going. So at that point, please go ahead and use your raise the hand button in your the bottom of your Zoom screen. That way we can get a nice and orderly queue going and then I will call on your name and ask you to please unmute to ask your question. Thank you. Beautiful. Fabulous. All right. Um, let's get started. Here we go.
do, 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 do. Hello. We're back. With both ears. I got my pen. My writing pen is stuck in the strings of my guitar. That's that's the trick to that. Because that's what it's like. Okay. Your questions. Anybody? Yes, just as a friendly reminder, please go ahead and use the raise your hand function and we will go ahead and call you in the order of the raised handses. I love that. The handses. <laughs> Come to that. Or not. We can also sit in silence. I like silence. Okay, Kayla, thank you for, oh, no, Riviana. Riviana, please go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Oh, sure, thanks. Um, okay, Riviana here. Um, glad to see you. Girl Sex is my favorite movie. Um, oh, so kind, <laughs> uh, thank you. And thanks to everyone who puts this on and gave me a chance to immediately get into some writing after work that was awesome um I uh I feel curious about your thoughts on stage directions I feel like recently it was told to me you know like just make sure they're doing like emotional work strategic work but I feel like yeah people fall all along the spectrum in terms of like their usefulness or how much to deploy that kind of thing so I just feel curious about your about your thoughts cool what a great what a great question what a great way to start um are you a writer and director or one of either or uh, a writer okay okay so you would be writing a script and I've heard all kinds of things from directors kind of like you Riviana I've heard like some directors go, oh, I really, I have to get it right because the writer wrote, you know, she picks up the pencil, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, okay, we love them. But we also love the directors who go, oh, okay, I don't know about all this. Um, and they have their take on it as long as it's a respectful take, you know? But that means we're talking about the director and not about the writer. Um, I enjoy writing what I see, you know? So if... If my character is in a whatever a red dress that she would wear to a party, you know, and I see that, you know, um, I write it in there, you know. Um, if my character is, you know, whatever, six feet tall, I write it in there. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's usually, if it gets in a stage direction, for me, it's usually kind of sort of important to the play. So I... Um, I, I I include the stage directions that are important to the play and the ones that are sort of like, it could go any way, you know, um, then I sort of tend to leave those out in successive drafts. You know, maybe the first draft, I write them all in there. I used to have a fun thing where I, I wouldn't write any stage directions. I just always work to put like, kind of like Shakespeare, you know, all the action into the line, you know? You didn't have a lot of stage directions. Like somebody goes like, I mean, I love the famous ones like exit pursued by a bear. You know, that's good, you know. But there's so many of them that are just like, like in that one play, uh, I can't remember what it is now, but the guy is saying like, get off your knees. I know it's said much more eloquently than that, but get off your knees. And she's like, no, I'm on my knees because I'm pleading. Get off your knees. You know, and there, it's just in the dialogue as far as I remember the script. So, it's really cool how it's all in there and like it has to happen. So that's the sneaky thing. If you have something that like you really want to happen, get sneaky with it and put it in the line of dialogue. <laughs> and then like they can't say, well, I don't know if she's wearing a red dress or not. She keeps referring to her red dress all the way through the play. So it's gotta be in there. Oh my God. And also it's even better when it's a movie because then you're like having like power over, you know, the, you know, film industrial complex or whatever they might not want you on the set but ha, ha, ha. you know but anyway 
I'm just be, I'm being totally silly about all that. But yeah, does that does that is that helpful? Yeah, yeah, I know it's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. For- but but please don't I would say don't censor yourself, be free. <laughs> and excuse me, and if you're feeling like I really want a page of stage directions because that's what I'm feeling, please, please write it down. Include it. You can always trim it back. Or you can go like, you know, Tennessee Williams and shit and be like that couple pages of stage directions. He's like, this is what I see. <laughs> yes. And we love him for that. Cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. Did Kayla have a question? No. Uh, was I just hallucinating? I mean, I do. Was no. You- okay. Yeah. Kayla's back. Yay. Uh, what? So what he's- painting? You have a Please beautiful painting back of you. Is that a beautiful painting? That's such a beautiful painting. It's a it's a mural. It's like one of the many murals here in Philadelphia. One of my favorites. Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um. So, I've been. I'm. I'm. I'm primarily a choreographer, but I'm also a writer. I've been like weaving back and forth with the two for a while. Um. And I've been writing this play, which I started shortly before joining Watch Me Work in 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've, my question, I have two questions. My one question is, how long, how long is too long to take a break from a project to get perspective? Mm. Um, because sometimes I feel like I get really in, so embedded into the project that I'm like kind of like in the weeds and I can't see the mm-hmm. road. Mm-hmm. Um, and my other question is kind of related to R- Riviana's question, but um, character descriptions. Um, I sometimes I feel like because I'm new to playwriting, my character descriptions can be really brief, but I, you know, then I, you know, do research and I read other plays and a character description can take like, you know, and it can be a whole like poetic essay on the character. So just like, those are my two, my two prongs. Uh-huh. 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 How, that's, those are great questions. I love questions like this because I just love talking about writing. Um, I love writing and I also love talking about writing. <laughs> um, how long is too, how long is too long? I mean, you want it to miss you, you know, like, oh, I need, I need Caleb back in my life. No, um, I mean, they say, musicians say, my, my husband was just saying this this morning as he played back a, a session, a recording session. He's like, yeah, this is what they say. You got to let it sit for like, you know, six months. You know, that's hardcore, you know. Six months, and then you listen to it, and you're really listening to it. I'm like, okay, that's I mean, that's not how my husband talks. But anyway, um, that's an idea. I tend to give it like, you know, a week. A week. You can, but as you know, so Kayla, you can feel the weeds, right? Mm-hmm. You, I feel like you, you did this. You have a sense of the weeds. So you can pick it up and look at it. And if you still feel those weeds, then put it down again. Mm-hmm. Pick it up after a couple more days. Maybe there are fewer weeds. Oh, look. You know, it's like this. Mm-hmm. Maybe put it down again. And after maybe a week and a half. Okay, now I'm in a sort of clearing. I can kind of see it. You know, you can feel that. That's a great um, thing to have inside you. The ability to feel where you are with your work on a really visceral level, which is really totally great. And those of you who haven't maybe thought about it like that, if you're feeling that, that's what it is. You're feeling that that a need to have a little space from it. So I would say it depends on um, when you can feel that I have a good distance from it so I can see what's going on. Character description. I, I, I mean, if you want to be real sneaky, you can put it in the line, you know. Mm-hmm. But if, if you really want to write a, a a page about your characters, you can, or you can just say it's a, it's a you know a, a, a man person who's you know you know seven feet tall, <laughs> you know what I mean? Who walks on you know whatever? Who wears you know red high heel shoes? You know I mean you you can you can you can just do a little a little bit, 
what you're comfortable with, what conveys what you want to convey to the reader. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to give them enough to hold on to. And I would say you don't want to give them so much that they just, you know, they, they again feel overwhelmed by, you know, this long essay you've written about your character. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. Thank you, Kayla. Jed, please unmute and ask your question. Hey, Jed. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for having me back. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm struggling with some feedback I have gotten. Mm -hmm. I, like you, don't want to ask permission to think big or um, with few limitations. However, uh, the feedback I'm getting from producers is that they won't even look at scripts that have more than six characters. How do I reconcile that mandate from local producers with the idea that I, I started out with a, a, a large cast that feedback actually helped another script crystallize. Okay. But now I'm telling a bigger story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with combining characters, creating ensemble roles. When does that get confusing for the audience? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, it's great, Jed, is that you acknowledged that the note in the past has helped you crystallize you know mm -hmm. so what's really great is Jed's really saying like the note at first may have been like mm, I don't know but he he took the note in his own way and was able to move forward with his script which is a really real strong uh writer strong artist move there which so congratulate yourself for that um oh, yeah no no it really is so um you know, economy, we're always thinking of economy, whether it's like a line or um, like a character description, you know what I mean? Um, the length of a play, we don't, someone says like, I wrote a, I wrote a, a, a 500 page play because I didn't have the energy or the discipline to write a 200 page play. Like <laughs> the, the idea that it actually takes more energy to practice economy um, because you have to make more choices, right? So you to, to get it like really exactly what it wants to be. Mm -hmm. um, we want to do that. But at the same time, maybe this is an epic with how many characters? 12, you said? 20. Oh, that was another piece. Um, okay. This is okay. back to my story about Stop the Church. Yes. So there are a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. People I mean, living and dying, being activists, having jobs, right, you know, right, all these right, things. Right. Well, you can find a I mean a, a core of 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 like 10 actors who play, oh look, it's 10 fingers, isn't that much? Who play a variety of roles, who play 30 roles. That can be that can be done. It's not confusing. Um, if you do it, if you're just very mindful when you do it, who's on stage when you really have to start thinking about staging as you're writing. And the doubling at best is always meaningful someone who doubles as character a comes back as character r that's me it creates a little bit of meaning or a lot of meaning hopefully in the mind of the audience and the reader mm -hmm. um and so all that so yes i love i mean that and that's part of the fun of of writing uh, uh of doing that right to combine characters it won't be confusing if you do your your work your writer's work and sometimes someplace need big casts mm. and and so maybe it's not you know after you've done all that work and you still have i mean they said what's what's their limit what was their limit the... uh they're saying six great so maybe if you have 10 and they're not going to look at it you have 10 characters and it's a story you want to tell hey maybe it's not for them it's okay you can write another you've done all the combining that you can do and you've really sharp and clear and maybe it's just not for them that's okay Okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I I have another question, if that's sure. okay. Sure. sure. So okay. I've never done any acting. Okay. And I have never been on a stage other than after the curtains come down. Right. Um, I signed up for a 
a workshop because I feel a responsibility toward my actors that I shouldn't ask them to do something I'm not willing to do myself. Oh, good um, so have you ever done anything like this and how did it impact your comprehension of the, of, the making of the souffle? Yeah. I mean, that's a great, that's how wonderful that you are taking um, some acting or you're studying acting so that you can, you know, do things that you're acting, that you're asking your actors to do. That's very, very generous. And it's, we should all do that. We who write things like dramatic writing things. Um, yeah, I've, I've done some acting. I had the weird habit, uh, habit of, uh, I have the weird habit of playing myself. No, I had the, I got on stage, place for the play gear. I was actually playing someone called the writer who everybody said was me. Who knows? Uh, so I, yeah, we did that. We ran at Joe's Pub for a, a good long while. So I have, I do, I, I, I'm a ham. I, I like getting up there. <laughs> um, and I, I love actors and they're so brave and so cool and so welcoming and so fearless and all those things that um, we would be too if we got out of the house more. Yeah. You know, so it's mm -hmm. great that you're, that you're, and you might, oh, Jed, Jed, you might find, you might find Jed that you like acting <laughs> you might like you know you might and it's so great you know and if you're in a company of actors as I was with these actors who um they just surrounded me and they made it fun and they made it feel easy because they're such pros that's what I'm hoping for it's being led by a choreographer and a oh. breath coach oh okay no, I don't know how to no, it's how to Portland so there. you know it's got to have weird <laughs> baked coach. in no, 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 yeah. no, no. But but a breath coach, that is great because breathing is such an essential part of writing. Agreed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, and especially those of us who write for live, you know, for spoken word stuff. So very cool. Have fun. Right. Well, thanks. Thanks for your input on that. Yeah. Thank you, Jed. All right. Thank you so much, Marianne. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi. Thanks so much. Um, hey, hi, thank you for being here. Hi, everybody. Thanks for all of those questions are already amazing. Um, and your answers. And what do you have to say about having multiple projects twirling at once? <laughs> and not having finished any, but then on one week, one is yanking at your sleeve harder than the other. And then you that gets your attention. And then I don't know. Do I ignore the ones and just try to focus on till I get it? Mm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. um, I think um, th I think that's a great question, and I love working on more than. Well, I don't. Do I love? It? I don't know. I tend to work on more than one project at once all the time. Mm. So I have bins. I, I won't. Well, I, no, I won't show. Look. Oh, I I mean, I mean, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 15, 16, 17. I mean, I've gotten so bad. I just pile things up and I sort of like roll through things. And then there's a music stand. Um, so, yeah. And it's, it's, it's possible. I find Marianne that you have to, um, you have to schedule yourself. And while you don't, in any imagination, need to work on every project every day, mm. you need to have like two that you're working on, you know, like, you, you know, um, sorry, the screen just blunt. There you are. Um, yeah. So you have maybe one that you work on in the morning and one that you work on in the afternoon, for example, oh. you know, um, yeah. I don't know what your day is like, but if you have a day job, one that you touch before you go to work, one that you touch at lunch. And maybe, oh. I mean, I'm just saying, I don't know, you know, people have different, you know, yeah. you have a morning time and you might have a lunch break, you know, that you can have some quiet time and then you have some time after work, maybe if that's, or if you have all day, you know, I, I tend to work in the morning and then in the afternoon, uh -huh. and I do two projects like that. And the songwriting kind of comes in in between because 
because <laughs> how else is it going to fit? You know what I mean? So, I do. So I would say st structure your day like that. Do you have like, or, or like if you have a weekend, a, a day like Saturday, and you don't have to go in for your job or whatever, you can structure your day. Half the day is this project, half the day is that project. And you just kind of spend maybe one week doing two projects. And then if you're looking, you think, let me deal with the other two projects. Then we do what we were talking with Kayla. You let those two projects cool down a little bit. Oh, yeah. and get some perspective. So you use right. what right. feels like a limitation to your advantage. Oh. Ah, look, I'm creating perspective and space. Yeah. Okay? Okay, yeah. Let those cool for a week. Do the other two other projects. Okay. Let those cool for a week. Go mm. back to the other two projects. Or maybe pick two more projects. Let those, right. and then wrote and then you're in some kind of interesting rotation they're always in your mind it it is a little you know um it's weird it's a weird thing but if with some organization um it can be done fantastic that is great thank you so much yeah. and also Marianne, keep your um keep some finish line make some finish lines for yourself Mm, deadlines this week, yeah well finish lines i call them we don't want it to be dead oh that's birds, true <laughs> birds are important Woo! that's right oh, oh gosh i know we have to remind ourselves words are important so <sighs> you want to be like finish line or a goal you know goal, right goal it's a cause for celebration make some goals for yourself i'm going to work on these two projects and by the end of this week i will have maybe it's just i will have worked on these two projects right just the act of it. Yeah, yeah. Just the act of it. Cause for celebration. That's the other thing. Give okay. yourself plenty of these. Yeah. Hats on the back. Or happy dances or whatever. However you're going to yourself. Good job. Give yourself a lot of good jobs. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. Great question. Thank you, Marianne. Emma, please unmute and ask your question. Thank you. Hi. Um, how are you? I'm well. I'm well blessed and favored and happy to be here. It's September. Okay. Yeah. How are you doing, Emma? <laughs> I'm good. I'm really excited to be back. I haven't been to this in a minute. So yeah. Um, I wanted to ask about writing with music because you've talked about that before and we talked about like writing in small chunks with music. Can you clarify what that means? Mm -hmm. Do you mean, you mean uh, writing while you have some music going like in your earphones? That's what you, mean. you don't mean like writing a song. Yeah, I mean like writing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, great. Um, I would, <laughs> it's tricky. I would say um, you want to choose some music to provide Uh, some kind of bubble, some kind of safe cocoon. You don't want music that's going to cause you to do this. Distraction. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that song. Whenever that song comes on, I think about my friend Jean and how we were hanging out on the beat, you know? Mm -mm. You want to have music that's going to provide you some sort of like hypnotic cocoon effect. Different. It's different for everybody and it varies from project to project, you know? Sometimes I'll listen to classical music. Sometimes I'll listen to jazz. Sometimes I'll listen to hip hop. Sometimes it, it varies. It, it varies. Um, um, so m lately, probably because I am writing more music than ever before, I have taken to doing this to my ears. Instead of putting in these, I put in these. The sound of my own head is so cool. It's also something to try. So you can pick a piece of music. I would say pick a, you know, one song and have it in rotation to create this supportive background cocoon thing, right? Try that. A song that you like. A song that makes you relax, helps you relax. Um, I would also offer, you know, these, these are great. These look great. You know? Um, yeah, that's what I've been doing. The earplugs. Mm. It's, really, it's really cool to listen to the sound of your own head. 
Cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Good question. Thank you. I'm just trying it out again. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, just I was thinking of something. I um was in I teach at NYU and I was in class today and talking to the students about how um with constructive criticism we want to lead with love. And some of the students were like, What? If we lead with love, we'll never say anything that's gonna help us get better. And I just thought about that. Um and just in my the way I see it is when we um your relationship with your work and your relationship with yourself is like a relationship that you would have with um, your, you know, sweetheart, your, your life partner, you know, and how when we relate to our life partner, hopefully we lead with love, even though we might say things like, you forgot to do the dishes or your laundry's on the floor again, or you were late picking me up from whatever, you know, you know what I mean? Even if we, we say something or point something out that they're not doing as well as we hoped, we're leading with love, you know? So leading with love doesn't mean that we're not mindful of where we need to improve and we're not dedicated to improving. It just means that it's coming from a place of deep love and trust. So when we talk to our partners, but also mostly ourselves and our work, you want to lead with love. I think we, I think in my experience, you get a lot further and you have a lot more fun. Two F words for the day. Further and fun, That's what we want. Also, did you know the word unicorn was in the Bible? <laughs> You're right. Oh, come on. Who knew that? Show of hands. Yeah. No, unicorn. And get, okay, and you'll never guess where it is. Hold on. I hope I get this right. It's in the book of Job. Look at the word unicorn. It appears like twice, I think. I don't think it was a misprint. I mean, maybe my Bible has a misprint. But uh, unicorn, unicorn in the Bible. Come on. Somebody look it up. No, don't look it up. Just don't, you don't have to take my word for it. But I just, I just dropped what allegedly what Google told me, which is that it comes up a few times. <laughs> In a few times. Okay. 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 There you go. Oh, you uh, Google told you they must be. Yeah, they must be true. It must be true. No, it comes up a few times. But yeah, in the book of Job, in the book of Job, Job, like the one that was having a hard time. Job was like, shit, my shit is like not happening right now. Like that. I mean, the whole book is like, wah, wah, wah. but the word unicorn comes up twice, at least twice. Riviana says maybe more. Maybe it's all the way through, sprinkling sparkle dust out of its behind. Amazing. That part's not in the Bible. But...
Oh no. Yes, Marianne. Um, one other thing. When when something comes up and I immediately shoot it down, I don't know if that's if it's a fearful thing that I just don't want to talk about or if it's what do you think when that happens if it happens or if it's something that I don't think fits how do I tell <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is it like a mean thing like is it a, is a what's the feeling around it is it like a wow or is it like a oh that makes like a grimace a little bit of a cringe like, like should I so should I idea come oh but the idea the idea itself without your reaction to it like wow there are unicorns in the bible Man. or yay what which feeling when you're entertaining your far out idea when you're entertaining your idea what feeling does it bring up in you oh that's interesting yeah i think sometimes there is an initial wow and then followed by a okay Good, good, okay, so if there's an initial wow, which is, I would say, just, you know, my experience, that's your gut, your gut, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. your gut, we eat and we all eat sauerkraut if we can digest that because it's very good for our gut biome, right? Uh -huh. okay. So you, that's your gut saying, yay, right? And then mm -hmm. your whatever, whatever the other, your protective person says no don't get excited <laughs> right okay, yes right okay okay so right so i encourage myself to entertain all my far out ideas mm -hmm. so when your far out idea comes what's great mariana is that you've recognized that you have an idea and you push it down or as you said shoot it down right yeah. You, or, you know, push it down, right? You can be more welcoming of your hunches and your wonderful far out ideas. I mean, they're unicorns. Just think they're unicorns flying around, you know, in the book of Job. <laughs> I mean, who wrote that book? Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're unicorns flying around, or not, they didn't. Well, they're, they're flying around in the Bible. Oh my God, right? <laughs> you know, so, I mean, you could, yeah, right. You you can be more welcoming of your ideas. You, you can, if you find yourself shooting them down, I mean, stop doing that. Mm. You Now you've come clean, you've admitted it in front mm. of many people who love you. <laughs> welcome, welcome them, come on in, crazy idea. Here, I'll, I'll put you on a, I'll write you down on a post-it mm. and put you in a basket, you know, like Moses. You know, she didn't know what to, what am I gonna do with Moses? I'm gonna put him in a basket, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So uh, you can just write it on a post-it and put it in a basket. Right? Mm -hmm. That's good. That's a good thing to do with them. And then maybe one day in a couple of months, you'll have a whole basket full of post-its and you just, you know, look through it just for fun. Yeah. Give yourself a chance. Okay. You know? yeah. That's like the spirit talking to you and saying, hey, I've <laughs> yeah. got a present for you. You know what I mean? Hey, I've got a present for you. I've got something wonderful to you, for you to think about or consider or give a home or maybe this can take root in your spirit. Mm. Right. That's what those things, that's what those hunches are, you know, and mm. not everything is going to bloom into a wonderful garden. Okay. Okay. But, but at least you can write it down on a post-it, get in the habit of giving yourself a chance. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. That's a great question. I think I think a lot of a lot of us do that. Nah, I'm not gonna do it. Mm. Yeah, what will people think? Nah, mm. what will my mom think? What will mm. my spouse think? Well, what will my coworkers? No, nah, I'm not. You know, I mean, the the spirit puts these notions into your to your heart. Who are you to say they're no good? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
a That's a good one. Question. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your answers. Thank you. On my ACDC t-shirt because they're, you know, interesting. Are we here next week, Zoe? I mean, are we on Watch Me Work next week? We're here not next Monday, but the following Monday on the 23rd. Okay. Okay. 23rd. The time is, we got two minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, um, also as a practice, since we won't be seeing each other next week, you know, just as an experiment, you know, try, try, you know, complimenting yourself. Again, we talked about that a little bit this week, you know, like, hey, I showed up to watch me work today. Hey, I worked for 20 minutes. Hey, I showed, I, 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 I admitted that sometimes I shoot down my fun ideas that I have, you know, hey, I'm doing, you'd be surprised in my experience. And progress is made in tiny, tiny, tiny steps. You know, inch, 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 just inching along. Um, word by word by word. Breath by breath by breath by breath. That's how I've continued going, you know. Oh, I mean, really, that's how we all continue going. Think about it. And every time you take a breath, you get a chance to reset. That too, yeah. We're gonna have a really good rest of the day. I hope you all do too. We're gonna have a great rest of the day. Okay. Thank yeah, you, so everyone. We love you all. We love you all. We'll see you in uh, the next time. Send in love. Bye. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.